Hello and welcome to Call of Plastic. For this episode, we review the Hero Force 72 piece Battlefield playset. If you watched the review of the True Heroes 65 piece set, then what you see here is exactly the same, except this set possesses radio operators and two fighter jets in addition to the two tanks. Now, this really turned into a series of Timmy replicas. It's been a lot of fun. This is the 72-piece playset, and the 100-piece playset is in the description below. Hero Force is an entire series of toys produced by Blip Toys and can be found at Target stores and various online retailers. And we'll be reviewing some of the other great hero sets also. All right, let's recon. The lid on this thing is identical to True Heroes. It has solid threads and the handle is durable. It can serve as a bunker even though it's rather bland and an almost flawless deployment except one of the jets gets caught up. Ah, there we go. I really appreciate that the two armies are provided with their own baggies. This makes assortment before battle much easier. We have the greens and the tans, and oh no, I've noticed something. This set is randomized. There are no even numbers between the sides, and the tans have the only flamethrower. And only one machine gunner versus three on the green side. Uh, such a disappointment. Blip slash target, whoever you really are, I think you'd do yourself a big favor by stepping up your quality control game and aiming for an equal and balanced number of figures on both sides. All right, let's keep it moving, people. We have 21 figures on each side, two jets, two tanks, two flag pieces, and two decal sheets. I think one for each jet, two bunkers with dual battlements, 12 barbed wire pieces, and four rock formations. This set has a total of 11 figures, not a bad amount of detailing in the clothing, each figure sporting classic BDUs of the Cold War era. There's even a hint of lacing on the boots, and you can see the soles of the boots also. These guys aren't carrying much weight, save for the bazookaman. The only gear they have are gun belts with perhaps mission essential items. The only two guys with gear on their backs are the radio operator and the flamethrower. The minesweeper possesses a headset, listening for any anomalies. Now, the grenadiers appear to have a sling pouch around them, and perhaps that holds more grenades. And with the sniper, you can see all five digits on the gun. As we come to this side, you can see the trigger finger is on the trigger, poised and ready to go. And rounding out the inspection lineup is the lone representative of the green mortarman and the lone rep for the tan flamethrowers. And this one's for you, Ace Combat Junkies. Hey, by the way, who remembers Over G? The thing that stands out the most with this set are the fighter jets. These are based off of the F-14 Tomcat, which is the famed fighter from the original 1980s movie Top Gun. They feature a nice metallic finish that captures the light beautifully at certain angles. Of course, the details are great also, including the inset of glass and panel pieces. These models have fixed wings, meaning they cannot be moved. But in the real life, version, the F-14s boast what is known as the variable sweep wing. At lower speeds, the wings are swept out. At higher speeds, the wings sweep inward. Our models appear to have wings swept at a cruising speed. We have two tanks, one per side. These of course based off of the M48 Patton. They feature enjoyable details around the turret and along the edge, where they feature essential gear for their crews. They're a good size compared to the soldiers, and provide a good amount of cover. Taking a closer look, we see detailing inside the wheels. The backside is textured for exhaust. The turret spins firmly and evenly, a full 360 degrees, and underneath we have tank treads, but also little wheels snapped into place. These move well on their own, but work more efficiently on a hard surface. 
The sand tank shares the same details as its OD green counterpart. We see a screw holding the turret firmly in place. And one thing about those metal screws, if you're playing outside and get them wet or muddy, you'll want to clean those screws to try to prevent rust. Going on to the props, we have two flak pieces with bases. They stand high over the soldiers' heads, and the decals fit perfectly into the insets. Both feature the Hero Force logo, with one outlined in tan and the other green. There are a total of 12 barbed wire fencing pieces, approximately half size compared to other sets. Despite their size, you get a lot of them, which you can use to secure choke points or wide swaths of terrain from advancing enemies. Then we have two bunkers with dual battlements. They have very defined texturing. These can accommodate three units and can be highly effective if deployed in the right place. They pass the clearance evaluation as the gunners clear the battlements and the flamethrower can clear the entirety of the bunker. And lastly, we have four rock formations. These may be for aesthetic appeal, but they provide rock solid cover for units, especially your prone units, and they are just low enough for gunners to deploy. This has been the Hero Force 72 piece Battlefield playset. This is a good quality set, still would love to see an even number of units, that's a pet peeve of mine, but if you can get beyond that, this is a fun set, and my favorite part are the F-14 fighter jets. I hope this review helped to inform and educate you, and if so, like, subscribe, and comment. Tell me what you like about this set, what you don't like, and let me know if you have any pet peeves when it comes to army men. For Call of Plastic, I'm Bill Greenwater, play safe, play hard, and we'll see you soon.